the world, welcome back to another video game analysis. Today we're going to analyze the Triforce. The Triforce is one of the most important, the most important item in Hyrule, representing the three gods of wisdom, courage, and power. And if someone evil got their hands on the Triforce, they have the power to be granted any wish they desire, like becoming the ruler. But no. Their all good will always prevail. I hope that epic speech that began the episode was epic enough for you, because that's what this episode is. That's what Zelda is. Epic. Is it epic adventure? Is it an RPG? Is it an adventure? Action adventure? Who cares? It's Zelda. I think it's both. Anyway, so the Triforce is an important part, and that's why I wanted to examine that as my first Zelda based episode. The Triforce is just. I said doing that because I'm cool. The Triforce is important. What does Link go on to get to save the world? The Triforce. And, and even the three characters. Let's, hang on. Let's talk about the number three here. Because that's what the Triforce is. Three. Three is a big number. One, two, three, man. Three. Three is in... Is a very can be a divine number in many theologies, mythologies, and religions. Um, three can be a very defining number, like um, a society is broken into social, religious, and political factors. A, um, a human being is represented in mind, body, and spirit, which I think is a direct relationship to the Triforce. You have power, the body, wisdom, the spirit, and courage, the mind. It, you can probably make them anyone you want, but that's the way I see it. But the Triforce is something that brings the whole game together in a force that describes that legend, which is Zelda, who carries the Triforce segment of wisdom as Link with courage and Ganon or Ganondorf with power. Don't be fooled, though. Ganon has, though he does have the Triforce of Power, he misuses it because he doesn't have the wisdom or the courage to balance it out. So he has a very, very wrong method of what power is supposed to be. The goddess of power, she does. You need all three. And what makes those three segments they've chosen to be segments of the Triforce is interesting because it doesn't represent a leader. Should a leader not be wise? Should a leader not have the courage to go... I mean, wisdom, that's a given. A, courage, a leader needs to have wisdom, and they need to know what the right direction is to establish a good way to lead. And they all have different opinions. Not everyone's going to like what you say, and some people might revolt against it, even though you think it's the, you know it's the right thing to do, and they're just not informed on it. And that's where courage comes in. You need to have the courage to lead. You need to stand up for what you believe will be the best way to do it. And if it fails, well... You're not that wise of a leader, are you? And then there's power. The representation of power, the true power. I think that the, whenever the king of Hyrule is represented in the games, like in Wind Waker or something like that, that is the true representation of power. He has the true idea of power. He knows. In fact, pretty much has the whole Triforce, but he has... But more importantly, he's always... Since Ocarina of Time, he's always had a point whether he was with Ganon or Ganondorf. Ganondorf now. Um, with Ganondorf, because that's the two visions of power together. The one that is balanced and true version of power, and the dark power. The evil power that just is corrupt and hungry. Now, anyway. So, the Triforce is important. I can't stress that enough in the world of Zelda. And what is it about the Triforce? It's just amazing. It's like people want to know what it is. There's so many theories. Between the timeline theorists, uh, Tetraforce theorists, all these theories, it's like just, it's just, oh, Zelda's the most wildly thing in own game. It's like, remember back in the day I mentioned this, I said that it should represent 
their games. I mean, like, the games should not have everything said. It, it just makes it fun that way. And it's amazing. The Triforce is an amazing thing. Now, each of the characters in the game are also pretty unbalanced. Um, I think it's best represented in the Wind Waker, actually, because um, in that game, it really, I think it really represents the character as not having the whole Triforce, even though they represent the whole Triforce. And personally, I feel the King is a good represent. It's not a theory, it doesn't do anything. I personally think that the King is a representation of the whole Triforce in one, whenever he's in there, and he was in that game. The Wind Waker, it shows Link as a kind of a dumb kid who's not very, who thinks, who doesn't think before he acts, as Tetra, who becomes Zelda, uh, shows, and, but he is courageous, he is willing to do anything to save his sister or save the planet, even though, even when he, it's not, the planet ridicules him like an ocarina of time, where he's just a kid without a fairy, and, um, it's just, yeah, and, uh, that's his side of courage, which, and, Zelda always helps him, the wisdom, and that's a rebellion thing, I mean, if you ever seen any movies or any, read any history with rebellion, it's always a wise, courageous person, but has no real tr uh, vision of power until they, they get the power, um, standing up and saying, hey, we got, I gotta do something, and that's what happens, and that's what that team represents, because Zelda, Zelda's not gonna go in the line of action, and she, but it's justified, because she's a princess. I mean, there was times where she went to action with Sheik and stuff, and that was cool. That was a great thing, but I don't think that represents Zelda well enough. Zelda is wise. She's wisdom. She is the true heir to Hyrule, and she's the true heir. But she needs Link. She needs Link to go on. And, that, and then you had Ganondorf, who I mentioned before. He has no wisdom or courage. In Rhea, so he has a very poor interpretation of power. Oh yeah. These characters together are a perfect representation of what the whole Triforce makes together, a divine leader, which are, which represents the three gods as a high rule, which each had a piece of this, and they work together to create the world and high rule. That's really cool. Oh yeah, and that's something we can relate to, because throughout history, it's always been that way, and it always will. That those three elements, three in general, is an important number to, to, to split up things. It's simple, it's not too complex, and it can be broken down into many factors, and overall, it creates one ultimate force. I'm gonna draw a triangle, then a little triangle inside, and we've got the Triforce. So, um, simple. Simple to draw. Simplicity is the oh, I wish, ah, stupid light. It's making it hard to see. There we go. Simplicity is the ultimate tool of success. Let me see if I can do it the other way, because I'm left-handed. Alright. So here's power. Uh, again, you can probably board this any way you want. This is how I do it. Here's wisdom. And, uh, here is courage, right there. You like that? Uh, yeah, I like that. Like total artist and stuff. Total artist. Look at that. Now, um, let me start by saying, what is this? Uh, what is this here? Empty space. There's a means. Empty space. What does it mean? This introduces the theory known as the Tetraforce theory, which is split up into many different ideas. All of them very smart. I will be doing a future episode on that sometime in the future. It's not. We'll see. Jumping ahead. But I want to bring this up because I have a theory um, regarding the Tetraforce that fits well into the fits well into the my analyst analy analysis of the Triforce because well kind of really turns it around a little bit, in my opinion. Um, let me start by saying that the Tetra Force is completely false. It is not true. Nintendo and Shigeru Miyamoto 
came out and said there is no Tetra Force, it is just the Triforce. But today Tetra Force is just Tetra Force is just for fun. Just for fun. Alright. Here's my theory. What if this triangle, as many people as many as different things say, is the Triforce of Joy. Cause doesn't Cause doesn't the leader need to be joyful? Uh positive? Always ready to not be negative? Yeah. Well anyway. In Majora's Mask is a very, very interesting uh game in the matter of it's against you can go to a temple there and yeah, there's temp. You can see statues, like pretty much blaspheming the Triforce, like showing complete disrespect. And why? I mean, yes, it is a parallel world. Um, well, it's supposed to be. we don't know that. I mean, a lot of people believe that. I do. Um, but if if you don't, whatever. But anyway, just roll with me here. That's supposed to be an opposite world. Like, granted, but. Why was it there? Why is it made? Why does there need to be an opposite world? Now, there's a theory... Oh yeah, I'm drawing ahead. The four giants there that saved the day and all, who are they? Well, we all know who they are. They explain their story, but are they not the opposite of the three goddesses? Because you need four. I mean, like, really? Four is a powerful number, too, but. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Four giants. Because everyone in that. Everyone there, they need to have a. Um, they need to have a separate thing about them. They need to have um, a opposite rendering, which was in Majora's Mask. I mean, yes, it is just. Uh, it is just taking sprites from the older game, but, like. Come on, really. I'm talking about deeper level. I'm talking about the game. In, let's pretend we're in the game here. Yeah. So here it is. This theory is going around that Majora's a woman. I believe that. Get that straight out. I believe... The four fairies in Majora really take me off to this, because the first three are power, wisdom, and courage, and there's a fourth one of joy. Hmm. Therefore, what if Majora is the goddess of joy? Yeah, I know. Really blasphemic, but... And I know this is out there, I don't believe it either, but... I, I have a theory that Majora is the fourth goddess of Hyrule, who, in turn, turned on the goddesses for her own selfish gain, and they banished her to a pocket dimension they created and turned her into a mask for no one to bother. So it could never be reached. I believe that. That's right. Because, again, like, why... But there was no specifications of where she came from. And... They're... Yeah. Plain and simple. And yes, it's just... It does, I think it explains the hate for the Triforce out there. I think maybe they follow Majora at first, and then the four giants who were created by the three goddesses again to, ban it, to show them she's evil. But the hate for the Triforce is still there. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, next time, we're going to do a character analysis on Spyro the Dragon. See you then.